Okay, so what we've done is we've constructed a main above uh, above ground pond. The pond's dimensions are uh, 13 feet by 5 feet by 3 feet. Uh, we calculated it, and it's roughly around 1,500 gallons of water for the main pond. The fish, uh, the fish that will provide the nutrition or the nutrients for the system, will reside in here. Okay, so what we got then. Down here at the bottom of the other end of this pipe is a sump pump. It's pushing water up into what I've constructed, uh, what we call a squirrel filter. This is the main, I guess I'll call it the heart and soul of it, because, uh, other than providing nutrients. This actually, the purpose of this is to uh, remove particulate matter, and I'll explain how that, how that happens. So, water comes in. To the swirl filter you can see it down there it's coming in it's it got it at a 45 degree angle PVC it starts a, uh, a whirlpool effect a centrifugal uh, effect so that any particular matter that comes into the swirl filter will be pushed towards the outside of the swirl filter and then eventually drop to the bottom these two pipes here. This one here is the exit. This one is the overflow. One's a little bit lower than that one. Okay, so the water that's that's leaving the swirl filter through via that pipe comes out here. So the nutrient-rich water exits the swirl filter via this two-inch PVC. You can see the media beds here. Off of the off of them, I've, I'm teeing off one-inch PVC at the bottom of the lava rock here. Okay. At the bottom of the lava rock here is a manifold that the nutrient-rich water extrudes from, filling up the media, the media bed that has the lava rock. You can see how wet the lava rock is, and that provides the nutrients, and the water, of course, is the delivery mechanism for the plants. It then, the water exits via a drain at this end, into another 2 inch PVC that goes all the way down here underneath and into what will be the feeder fish barrel. Okay, so this is what we call the feeder fish barrel. So once the nutrient-rich water filters through the media beds, providing the nutrition for the plants and things of that sort, it enters into the, the barrel here, okay? And this is nothing more than just a receptacle to hold the water. We're going to screen this off and then eventually stock feeder fish in here that will, will be able to transplant to the main pond to feed the main fish that are providing the nutrition to the plants. And so... It exits back into the pond for re recycling. And there you have it. Welcome to Aquabiotic Systems. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick little tour of my aquaponic system. Uh, we've had it going probably since about June of 2011. And it is now November 6th of 2011, about four months later. Let's go check it out. So here we've got our whole little electrical pump set up. Um, right now all it has is the back wall. Soon it'll have a roof over its head with the little cement platform uh, where I'll be storing some electrical stuff, outlets, etc. Switches to turn things on and off as well as the air pump and the water pump. Here we've got our switches to turn the pumps on and off as well as some outlets. It's running on 240 volt. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about 
how our air system works. Um, so I'm going to give you a rundown here of how we have our PVC pipe and tubing all set up. So here we've got our two air pumps. They each have a hose right here. There's two hoses. And as you can see right there as well as right here we've got our tubing that comes from the pump and goes into this into this device that we've created. It's kind of like a manifold, an air manifold. So we've got an end cap here that we actually screwed a hole in and screwed a little nipple on. And then we actually drilled some holes into the same thing all around where we've got these nipples. I'll show you here and you can actually see the water bubbling right there in the corners. Right there in that corner. All right, so here we've got our little filter screen. I'll get to that in a second, but here again we have our nipples and we have our air stones. So this manifold here pretty much is just taking all the air and circulating it around. So again, there's air coming in from this side, air coming in from that side. And between those two air pumps I've got enough air to pump all my air stones. And there you have my manifold. So now let's go back to this filter here. So this filter screen is a filter screen with about, I think it's a three to four inch pipe and that pipe is buried underneath the ground and it pretty much goes to feed my wisteria. As you can see, I've got a nice little gazebo here with some plant cover to keep it cool. There's some banana trees in the back there, some bamboo, there's a rose bush so this pipe goes underground from the filter and we've got perforated pipe wrapped in this fabric here, this filter fabric, underground and that serves as an overflow. So we get a lot of rain here in Santa Cruz. So we have to incorporate an overflow so that the tanks don't overflow with water and the fish come falling out the top. So we've designed that overflow so that as the water fills up from all the heavy rain all the winter long, um, I can actually feed all my other plants uh, that are around this vicinity. So I can actually take the overflow water and bring it to where I need to uh, using PVC pipe. And in here we've got our fish. We've got about 170 rainbow trout more or less between this tank and this tank and they're both buried underground. That helps us keep the water a lot colder. I'm going to turn off these pumps here. And by turning off these pumps, I think we might be able to get a good glimpse of some fish. I've had the fish for four months and there's actually some pretty good sized fish in there. I see some swimming in there. There they are. I think it's feeding time.
Now we got a good glimpse of them. Exactly some more in here. You can't actually see, we get quite the reflection there. You do see some close to the surface. That was a pretty big one right there, but let's see if we can get some light on here. Let's see if we can get a good glimpse of any of them. They are coming to the surface. Here's my filter screen where the water goes back to the pump and then from the pump up the hillside. We'll get a closer look at that in a second. And then we've got some stairs leading up to the solids collector to the left. So we come up the stairs and here we've got our solids collector. We've got the water coming in and we've got some baffles right here and right here. Those are two baffles and then there's another one here in the middle that goes two-thirds of the way up. These go two-thirds of the way down. It's pretty much slowing down the water. We've got some water hyacinths helping to filter out the water. These things, the water hyacinths are actually really good for your compost piles as well. Right there. As you see, right there, there's the red knob. That red knob right there, along with this pipe, so we collect our solids, our solids collect down at the bottom of this and as they build up every so often we pretty much turn this valve and the pipe goes down into a worm bin right there. Some uh, hookup for air stones which we use as our degas chamber and there you have it. There's a filter screen down there. There's a filter screen as well as the air stones which help to degas all the ammonia. And then we go to our first trough. We've got all kinds of different winter greens growing here. As you can see, that's one, two, three, and there's another three down below there. And it's, they're all stepped. We've got one platform, this platform here that stores these three, and then another platform there that stores those three. Right now our system's totally up and running. This bed right here has not been planted out yet. As you can see, I use bamboo rafts. These come from local and sustainable bamboo resource here in Santa Cruz. So I have untreated bamboo. I'm working on different designs for these bamboos. see there there's those three and each one of those are tiered and then we've got ourselves another little platform here that houses the next three some extra tanks thinking about maybe growing some algae that I might use as fuel for my veggie veggie powered diesel truck um, and also I can use some of that algae for fish food after I squeeze all the lipids and use that as fuel. But we've got many different kinds of vegetables here, winter vegetables. We've got cabbages, we've got broccolis, we've got lettuces, um, kales, mustard greens, bok choys, all the kinds of different winter greens. Right now, I'm actually trying to work on the pH. Our pH is at 7.5, our water's at 51.4 degrees. That's actually really good. Trout like the cold water. Uh, now, there is a battle between the vegetables and the trout here because of that cold water, but again, I'm going with the winter greens, which do good in cold temperatures. Different kinds of greens here, as you can see. We've got our plastic IBC tanks here, cut in half. These are the bottom halves, those are the top halves. I've also got some uh, mosquito fish. 
uh, Western Gambusia is growing in these tanks. These mosquito fish help keep the mosquito population down. They eat all the algae, which uh, competes with the roots of the plants for uh, nutrition. And they also serve as a fish food for my rainbow trout. I also have different methods of capturing bugs. It's one of the main diet for trout. And there you have it. So please check back with us soon um, as we keep, we'll keep you updated uh, to, with the progress of this system. Thanks.